Okay, I'm so flabbergasted by this story that I don't even know where to begin. Apparently, gasoline, kerosene, benzene, turpentine, highly flammable chemicals are supposed to be a cure for head lice, head and body lice. Okay. Now, there are plenty of over-the-counter medications out there that you can buy from your local pharmacy, your Walmart, your, you know, local superstore, grocery store, whatever. There are plenty of over-the-counter remedies you can buy. If you can't afford those, contact me. Seriously, email me because I can tell you several um, spices you have in your kitchen right now that can get rid of lice, that can get rid of, of fleas on your cats and stuff. You do not need to use gasoline to get rid of lice, okay? <laughs> um, it makes me wonder that parents who are uneducated enough that they would be willing to pour gasoline over their children to get rid of lice. I wonder if these parents are also ignorant enough when it comes to their education that they do not know proper hygiene to begin with. Um, seriously, that's like, do not put gas on anybody or anything that is alive, okay? Please, gas goes in motorized vehicles, okay? Unless your vehicle happens to be a diesel. In that case, it's a diesel fuel, okay? Seriously, flammable items, flammable chemicals should not be put on a human being and says, unless it says on the product that, is, that it's for topical use on a living person, okay? And that goes for any chemical. That goes for any substance, okay? <laughs> it should not go on a living thing, animal, person, doesn't matter. Unless it says on it that it is for topical use, okay? Now, for those people out there going, there's no way that this happened. There's no way that there are parents out there who are silly enough to do this, okay? It's happened. I'll try to list this, the stories quickly. I don't want this video to run on forever. In October of 1989, in Pendleton, South Carolina, a five-year-old was hospitalized when the gas fumes were ignited by the pilot light on the stove. Same thing happened April of 1992, 16-year-old girl in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In September of 1995, a 12-year-old um, in Fort Worth, Texas, and her mother, so the 12-year-old girl and the 40-year-old mother, were both burned between 70 and 80% of their body when the mother poured gas over the young girl while she was smoking a cigarette. Okay? Not only did the mother pour gas over her kid, but she was smoking when she did it. Okay? Um, in 1996, September 1996, an 11-year-old girl in Merrimack, Wisconsin, again, the pilot light ignited it. In July of 97, a 13-year-old in Des Moines, Iowa, again, uh, pilot light, this time on the water heater. In 1998, October 98, a 4-year-old in Davie, Florida, the stove's pilot light lit her on fire. In August of 2000, a 12-year-old in Aurora, Colorado was lit on fire when the pilot light on the stove ignited her. In September of 2003, a 13-year-old in Berkeley, California was, uh, was burnt to the point he lost all the fingers on his left hand, sorry, right hand, and two fingers on his left um, to amputation because of the severity of the burns. Now. For those of you out there saying, yeah, yeah, that was years ago, right? Like, I'm sure that it hasn't happened recently. You're, think again. In February of this year, 2009, okay, February 2009, 
An 18-year-old girl in Evansville, Indiana suffered second and third degree burns over half her body after the pilot light of the nearby water heater ignited the gasoline used on her hair. Okay, it's one thing for the parents not to know the dangers of gas, but how come this 18-year-old girl did not learn that in basic science class in school? I know in my area that's the first thing they teach in every science class the first day or two. They teach what these little symbols mean on chemicals, what to do when you see them, what not to do when you see them. On top of that, I thought nowadays that pretty much any job required that you have this course called WMIS. I believe the initials are WHMS. This course, it teaches you how to read all those funny little symbols on like jars of everything from uh, dish soap to rocket fuel. Like it teaches you what all these symbols mean because for the amount of chemicals that are in our world, there are only, I'm going to say like a hundred symbols maybe to learn and you know what they mean, what to do when you encounter them, what not to do when you see these symbols. Like it's not a very time-consuming course for the amount of information you'll get and if you go to your employer and say like I want this women's course I believe by law in most areas they're required to give you that course free of charge or at least pay for it that's my rant on pouring gas over kids in order to rid them of lice if you can't afford the cures at the grocery store or the drugstore or you just don't want to put chemicals on your kids, which is kind of ironic if you're going to pour gas on them. Anyway, just don't do it. If you need an alternative to the store-bought ones, contact me, email me, and I will go through my book of, of herbal, all-natural remedies, and I will get you a solution that will work for you, okay? Please, just put the gas can down, step away from the pilot light, and have a good day, thanks.